Project 160 is capacitors in series. I'm going to turn on the slide switch. The RV2 lever will be on the very left position, and then I'm going to move the switcher toward my right. The bicolor LED flashes yellow, and then when I move the switcher to the other position, the bicolor LED is red, and it comes on quickly before going out. And you can repeat this. Move the switcher to my right, and then move it to my left. When I move the switcher to my right, the C4 capacitor charges, and when I move it to the my left, it discharges. Now, with the switcher back to the middle position, I'm going to turn off the slide switch, and this will connect the C7 capacitor in series with the bicolor LED, and I'm going to repeat the switching procedure. Now, nothing happens when I move the switcher to my right, but when I move it to my left, the LED quickly lights up, but just for a second. Now the C4 and C7 capacitors are in series when the slide switch is off and the smaller resistor will naturally receive more power as if you had a small storage tank for electricity in series with a big tank. Electricity will fill both of them at the same time, but the small one will fill up more quickly and stop the flow. That's what Snappy says. Now I can repeat the previous test. I'm just going to do the earlier one. And I'm going to have the adjustable resistor on uh, set to the right. Now the LED turns off more slowly, even though it's dimmer. Also, the C4 capacitor charges up more slowly. And moving the lever on the adjustable resistor won't make much of a difference when the C7 capacitor is connected too. So hopefully it will, will be easy for you to understand how the capacitors are working in this project when they're in series. Project 161 is capacitors in parallel. As you can see, the circuit looks a little different than in the previous project. Now the capacitors are connected in parallel. Right now I have the slide switch off and therefore only the 7C7 capacitor is used in the circuit. And with the adjustable resistor to my left, I'm going to move the switcher to my right and the bicolor LED will quickly flash yellow. Then I, when I move the switcher to my left, it will quickly flash red, although it may be hard to tell. You can see better now with the uh, camera zoomed in on the LED. But now I am going to turn on the slide switch and now the C4 capacitor is included. The C7 capacitor is bypassed. Now the LED is even brighter and it will also stay on a little bit longer too when RV2 is set to the very left. However, when I move it, let's say halfway, now the LED will stay on even longer because it slows the rate at which current flows out of the C4 capacitor and through the LED. Now, when I set RV to the rightmost setting, the bicol LED stays on the longest. Now with the uh, storage tank analogy regarding the parallel circuit, if you placed a large storage tank and a small one side by side in parallel, even though it says large, I think they meant small, electricity will flow into both at the same time, but the flow will continue until both tanks are completely full. Project 162 is adjustable light motor. 
I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the light motor, bicolor LED, and air fountain will operate, but use the adjustable resistor to adjust the current flowing to any of these components. When the RV lever is closest to me, the bicolor LED will be on at full brightness and it's red, while the light motor and air fountain will be off. Now, if I move the lever on the adjustable resistor farthest from me, the light motor and the air fountain will be on. The light motor is spinning at full speed and the LEDs there are at full brightness, but the air fountain may not be on at full power because it requires more current to operate. But you can see the ball dancing on the spout of the air fountain. It's best to do this in a dimly lit area because you can see the effects of the light motor LEDs better. 163 is adjustable low speed fan. When I turn on the slide switch, the light motor spins, but at a reduced speed and not all of the LEDs light up. You may see that they're also dimmer. When I move the lever on the adjustable resistor toward me, the motor spins slower and its LEDs become dim, dimmer before turning off. But now the bicolor LED is on at full brightness. It's recommended you use new batteries for this project and don't modify this circuit to use both battery holders because the excessive current with this particular circuit may damage your parts. Project 164 is transistor control. I'm going to turn on the slide switch, the merry-go-round spins, and the bicolor LED comes on. I can use the adjustable resistor to control its speed and the brightness of the bicolor LED as well, but you may notice that the merry-go-round operates on only part of RV2's range. In this circuit, the Q2 transistor is controlling the speed of the geared motor along with the adjustable resistor. A small electric current that goes to the transistor through the RV2 and the LED controls a larger current from the geared motor into the transistor. You can't use the RV2 directly with the geared motor because of its high resistance, which will keep the motor from working. I think that's pretty interesting. 165 is reversible motor. This project is very simple. I have the light motor and with the switcher to my right, I turn on the slide switch and the motor spins and lights up. Now, when I move the switcher to the center position, the motor stops, but when I move it to the left, it now spins in the opposite direction, except now the LEDs do not come on. That's because current can only flow through them in one direction, although the motor itself works regardless of the direction that current is flowing. Move the switcher back to the right and all the LEDs come on again. 166 is slow reversible motor. It's the same principle, but now the motor spins a lot slower because I removed one of the battery holders. Now there's only three volts of power to the circuit as opposed to six earlier. The motor spins more slowly and only some of the LEDs light up dimly. And moving the switcher to the left lets the motor spin counterclockwise, but the LEDs don't come on. Project 167 is orange light. Please turn down your volume because there's gonna be a loud alarm here. 
but watch the color, the bicolor LED. As the alarm sounds, the bicolor LED glows, but it may look orange instead of either yellow or red. Now, it may look a little different to the camera than it appears to your eyes, but it is like an orangish color because the alarm causes the C7 capacitor to charge and discharge into the bicolor LED at a very high rate. Normally, when you turn on the switch, the capacitor will charge and the LED will glow one color. And then when you discharge the capacitor by turning off the switch, it will glow the other color. But the colors switch so quickly that they may appear to be orange. And red and yellow make orange when you mix them. Project 168 is light, sound, and flight. I am going to turn on the slide switch and notice that the light motor is connected to the airplane. Then I am going to... Now please turn down your volume because there'll be a loud alarm. But let's see what happens when I turn on the slide switch. An alarm sounds, the bicolor LED lights up, and the light motor spins and lights up on the airplane. And the direction in which the motor is rotating is pushing the plane backwards. If I reverse the direction of the motor, then it would may propel the plane forward a little bit. And if you want, you can change variants of the alarm. You can make it sound like a European siren. Or you can make, you make it sound like a police car siren. Or you can make it sound like a machine gun siren. And the LED flashes as well. Thank you so much for watching the projects of Snap Circuits Motion. I hope that you enjoyed them and you learned a lot from them too.